What is up, guys? Welcome back for our Week 8 Team Builder for the GBA D-League. This week we are taking on Gregulator60, or Greg, and his Los Angeles Clefable. I believe this is the first time that I've ever battled Greg in Draft League format, and I've known him for a year, so uh, it's been quite a long time coming. And let's look over his team. You guys see it on the right side. He's got Zygarde. 50% uh, of course, Celestila, Mega Gallade, Nihiligo, Sneasel, Rotom Wash, Alolan Marowak, Whimsicott, Silvali, Vullaby, and Glycopod. So uh, his Zemons are Zygarde and Glycopod. He chose to take his uh, his A tier and one of his, uh, his E tiers, or tier 1, tier 5, I can't remember what they're called now. It's been too long since we drafted, but anyway, point is, he's got a pretty scary team. Uh, the main threats that I see are going to be his Zygarde, his Mega Gallade, uh, Alolan Marowak to some extent, and Glycopod if he decides to bring that. He hasn't brought it too often, I believe, this season, and when he does, it's mostly spikes. So, uh, but it can definitely come as a Z-mon. I could see that with uh, Z first impression. Uh, I could do a lot of damage to my team if you guys see it on the left side. Uh, that plus Aqua Jet pretty much destroys everything, and that thing gets access to Ice Beam, so a physically defensive Salamence doesn't even deal with it very well. So, uh, let's get into the team right away. First thing that I decided to bring was Cresselia, Serenity. We've got a uh, bold... Uh, Bold Cresselia with Levitate Leftovers, of course. Ice Beam, Psy Shock, Moonlight, and Protect. It's EV spread, you guys see it on screen. We've got 252 HP, 236 in defense with a uh, Bold Nature, of course, as I said. 4 in Special Attack, 4 in Spidef, and uh, 12 in Speed. The 4 in Special Attack is actually quite crucial for 2 it KOing non uh, bulk invested Zygarde uh, from full as I could miss out if I get two absolute low rolls on that thing, which would be really annoying. It also helps for a little bit of bulk investment. Uh, my defense investment lets me take on pretty much any variant of Zygarde, realistically. Uh, because of the fact that I have Protect on here, uh, I can pretty much negate the Devastating Drake or the uh, the Tectonic Rage if he decides to run that with Thousand Arrows, but although I don't think that hits Cresselia because it's not actually Thousand Arrows. So there's that. Psyshock pretty much hits his team pretty well across, I would say. Uh, everything but the Sneasel and the uh, Vullaby, his Dark types, of course. Uh, everything else takes de decent damage. Maybe Celesteela, not so much, but uh, it's mainly there for, like, Nihiligo. For the uh, the Gallade, it doesn't appreciate switching it on. Psyshock takes, like, 30-something. Uh, Moonlight, I need to recover up on the Zygarde. And Ice Beam keeps it from getting up subs on me. I don't want it to EV itself to be able to take Moonblast, as that's what I'm more likely to run because of the fact that he does have two Dark types, and I want to be able to hit them. Uh, but I'm not too worried about his Sneasel, nor am I worried about his Vullaby because I can handle them decently well with the rest of my team. So uh, that's pretty much Cresselia. There's not much to say about this spread. It's uh, it's pretty straightforward. I have a little bit of speed investment to make sure that he doesn't speed creep me with anything like uh, Celesteela or whatever. Uh, and yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty much it. Moving on, we have Thunderous. The uh, Enru the Thunderous, excuse me, with a Naive Prankster, Charty Berry, Thunderbolt, Hidden Power Ground, uh, Knock Off, and Toxic. Now you guys are probably wondering why I'm not running Hidden Power Ice when he has a Zygarde. The reason being is that I'm not too scared of Zygarde considering I have Celesteela, uh, not Celesteela, excuse me, Cresselia. Uh, I'm going to be switching into it most often against the Zygarde. Knocking it off on the Switch is probably a lot better, getting rid of its item or finding out if it's a Zemon. <clears throat> and if I get a Knock Off on Nihiligo as it switches in, uh, I don't do a KO typically with knockoff, so he could uh, just stay in and power gem me, and I can hidden power ground him. This also helps with the Marowak. I can knock off into hidden power ground or knock off twice. Uh, I did EV my uh, my Thunderous to be able to uh, knock out Marowak after rocks, even max HP after, after two knockoffs. That's the reason I'm naive actually, is because I don't want to drop my attack considering that I do have knockoff. We're running max special attack with 4 HP investment and uh, max speed because of his Mega Gallade because that thing is the biggest threat to me on his team, I feel. So, uh, Toxic is there because I can switch. I can stay in on the Zygarde the first turn should he want to sub. Uh, I can even get off Toxic on things like Marowak and the... Uh, uh, the Rotom specifically is the big thing, Whimsicott as well, Silvali if he doesn't run Silvali Steel, uh, it, it also cripples the uh, the Vullaby quite a bit. And Charty Berry is there because uh, I'm also, this is also my main switch into a Celesteela, I have nothing else that really takes it on. Uh, I can switch into Decidueye, which you guys are going to see later, on a Leech Seed and then double into uh, my Thunderous on something like a Flamethrower, I can take it decently well even though I'm naive and then threaten out the Celesteela with a Thunderbolt. What I don't want to happen is for him to be a setup Celesteela and have Stone Edge to deal with my Thunderous. On top of that, I, with this spread, uh, even though I have no special defense and I'm uh, negative nature, naive, uh, I can take a Choice Scarf, um, a Choice Scarf Power Gem from the Nihiligo decently well as well. 
uh, because of the Charty Berry, and there's a lot of things on his team that can run rock moves specifically for my Thunderous, uh, i.e. Celestila, and of course the Nihiligo, a couple of other things as well, so I uh, wanted to be able to cover those most uh, most importantly, and uh, getting rid of Nihiligo or uh, the Celestila early on is really good, both of his Ultra Beasts, uh, getting rid of those would be amazing, so that's why I'm not running Hidden Power Ice. Toxic, I feel, is a little bit better because his only Steel type uh, is, of course, either Silvali Steel or the Celestila, and Celestila doesn't e appreciate Thunderous, so makes sense. Moving on, we have our next mod on the team, which is Alphonse the Metagross. We have Earthquake, Bullet Punch, Ice Punch, and Stealth Rock with an Adamant Nature this week, uh, rocking 252 HP, 124 in Attack with an Adamant Nature, and 132 in Spadef. The reason that I'm running this much attack is because I knock out non-bulk invested Zygarde with Ice Punch into Bullet Punch 100% of the time. I think even max HP, I'm going to calc it real quick for you guys, just to make sure I'm not spouting nonsense. But uh, Metacross, Alphonse, where are you? Alphonse, this is the Ice Punch, nope, this is not the Ice Punch variant. Did I spell its name wrong? Uh, I did spell its name wrong. <laughs> Alright, well we, uh, we have a misspelled Alphonse this week, guys, uh, so you guys are going to have to deal with that. But. Uh, I don't have time to fix it. I guess I could go rename it. I'll do that after, but uh, where is the appropriate Alphonse? Uh, Metagross, where's the misspelled one? There it is. Uh, and Zygarde. Ice Punch normally does 84 to 100 to no bulk, and then Bullet Punch cleans it up with 16.8 to 20%, so I always knock it out even with two minerals if it has no bulk investment. If it's coming in on rocks with a little bit of bulk, I can still knock it out with potentially with an Ice Punch into Bullet Punch, so. Uh, plus, it's Thousand Arrows doesn't immediately KO me uh, because of the 252 HP. This is going to be my primary switch into things like his Nihiligo, because uh, that thing is extremely scary, as well as his Whimsicott. I can pivot between Metagross and uh, Umbreon, which you guys are going to see next, uh, on his Nihiligo pretty well uh, in case Metagross gets pretty low. Uh, I can just go into Umbreon, fire off a Wish, pass it back into Metagross, so that's pretty much why it's there. Stealth Rocks, because that's really going to help with things like the Sneasel, the Marowak, uh, the Golisopod, the Vullabee. He's pretty weak to Rocks across his team, so uh, I really enjoy having Rocks up against this team. I brought Rocks pretty much every week, but uh, especially against this team, they're really going to help, so yeah, that's, uh, that's Metagross. Moving on to Umbreon that I just mentioned. Blair, we did spell this name correctly, luckily. Uh, we are bold with uh, Synchronize, of course, Leftovers, Foul Play, Taunt, Wish, and protect. I'm ringing back Taunt this week because I really liked it last week, and I feel like it can do uh, a number to his team, specifically Volibee. Uh, I can win in a uh, Volibee versus Umbreon war, uh, should I have Taunt on this thing, which I do, of course, as you as you guys see. Uh, also, I believe I outspeed Celesteela naturally, uh, so unless he runs a little bit of speed, of course, we are running uh, 28 speed investment on our Umbreon, as you guys see on screen. Uh, that's one to beat a speed creep from Marowak as well as uh, his Celesteela, so I'm able to taunt it, keep it from leech seeming up or setting up, uh, I don't know, say, um, Autotomizes, for example, but obviously if it's running Autotomizes, it's running a little bit more speed, but uh, Taunt is there mainly for the Volibee to make sure that it doesn't do bits to my team. Uh, we got Wish Protect, of course, as usual, and Foul Play is very nice against him. It's really good for the Marowak, really good for the uh, Zygarde, uh, the Mega Gallade before it Mega Evolves, or even after it Mega Evolves when it doesn't have its Justified anymore, because that's kind of scary. Uh, it hits Nihiligo decently hard, even though uh, it doesn't have the best attack. It also doesn't have the best defense, so it takes a little bit of damage from that. Uh, I don't want Glycopod coming in on me for free, so really the only thing that deals super well with this is going to be uh, either Gallade if it's already in, or Whimsicott. So Umbreon pretty much has free reign to switch in most of the time on his team. I don't really want to catch a knockoff, uh, but neither does the rest of his team. That's why we're running it on Thunderous. So, I mean, knockoff is pretty much unavoidable. If it's coming out, it's coming out. There's nothing I can do. Uh, as you guys can tell, I don't have Heal Bell on this set, uh, and I don't have Rest on Cresselia either. So I'm really hoping that he doesn't bring a Toxic Zygarde, although that is what I can see coming. However, I have brought Heal Bell Umbreon quite a bit this season, so he might be deterred from bringing that... Uh, that kind of Zygarde against me, so fingers crossed. Anyway, that's, uh, that's Blair. Moving on, we have Kikio the Decidueye back this week. Didn't do as much as I wanted it to last week, unfortunately, because Leo brought, like, the perfect team, a very offensive, uh, a very offensive Shaman that I was not able to handle and it had Toxic on it, so that was kind of annoying, the fact that I didn't have U-Turn, but as you guys can see, we are running Adamant, uh, Overgrow Choice Scarfed, uh, this week. Uh, because I need something to revenge his Mega Gallade should it get up to plus two, and this thing actually outspeeds both Mega Gallade and uh, a speed creeping Sneasel to my Thunderous. So I'm able to come in on, on Sneasel as long as it doesn't Ice Shard me, I can U turn out. And to non EV Light Sneasel, I believe the calc was uh, after Rocks, it's dead, maybe even after a Spike. I'll calc that up for you guys right now. Uh, Sneasel Choice Band versus Decidueye. 
uh, Kikyo, whoops, wrong one, Decidueye, Kikyo, uh, U-turn to a level 50, thank you very much, does 93 to 110%, <laughs> so that's with no bulk, of course, no EV light, so that does a lot of damage, and his Ice Shard to me only does 67 to 81, so I can live it after rocks, so even if he decides to Ice Shard predicting that I'm, the fact that I'm Scarfed, I can still come in one more time, or I can pass a Wish from Umbreon into this thing, it'll gain a lot of health back, considering that I'm not running much HP, I'm only running 12 in HP, I'm running 252 attack, because I need the Adamant Nature to be able to take out Gallade, uh, I believe, after Stealth Rocks, if I'm not mistaken, it does the most amount of damage to Impossible, uh, I'll show that to you guys right now. It does 93 to 93.7 to 113, so it's a guaranteed knockout after rocks if he's running no bulk. Uh, and I can always U-turn into come back into Decidueye and Spirit Shackle, and that'll knock out uh, whatever variant of Gallade he's running. Even a max HP variant should drop because it does 22 with the U-turn and then 76 with the Spirit Shackle. So yeah, that's uh, that's Decidueye for you guys. Uh, pretty straightforward, just a choice scarf set. Leaf Blade also has a lot of. Uh, good targets on his team to hit, like it, it can knock the Lysopod into Emergency Exit, uh, can hit the uh, the Zygarde pretty hard, uh, the Nihiligo especially, and the Rotom, the Rotom's the big thing. I don't ever want to switch this thing on, on in, in on a Will-O-Wisp, it never happened in any one of my mocks, but I was very, very cautious about it. I'd much rather switch an Umbreon than Decidueye on the Rotom, because I don't want, ever want this thing getting burned, because of the fact that I don't have Heal Bell on my team, so I have to be very careful about that, but... Again, hopefully he doesn't bring Will-O-Wisp and he just brings Toxic to Toxic my Umbreon. That's uh, that's the ideal situation, in which case I don't really care because Umbreon's, while it's good against this team, it's not super important to winning. Uh, and finally, we have Quillfish, Bakugo, back again this week with an Adamant Intimidate uh, Wakan Berry set with Waterfall, Taunt, uh, Spikes, and Poison Jab. So I'm running two berries on this team, Chardy and Wakan. Uh, this is actually pretty much an ideal lead for me against this team. I don't expect his Gallade to run Psychic Coverage, because it really only hits my Infernape, which fighting moves can hit anyway, and it hits Quillfish as well. I expect Fighting, Dark, and Ice, because Dark hits my Metagross, as well as my Decidueye and my Cresselia. Ice hits my Thunderous and my Salamence, and Fighting hits decently well on my Infernape, and also hits for super effective damage on my Umbreon, my Pillaswine, and my Zangoose. So, as I said before, Mega Gallade is a huge threat, especially an SD set, a bulk up set would be horrific for me, uh, but I don't expect him to run Psychic Coverage, uh, because of the fact that he needs to cover my entire team and he needs to have a setup movie if he wants to be dangerous enough uh, against my Cresselia and whatnot. So. Uh, I really, really expect him not to carry Psychic Coverage, although it would be, be best for him to ignore the Metagross and just run Bug, Psychic, and Ice. X-Scissor, Zen Headbutt, and Ice Punch would be way, way better against me. Uh, just forget about the, uh, I believe it's the Fighting Coverage, like, leave it aside. And Bug hits Cresselia as well as uh, Umbreon, he wouldn't need Knock Off. And then he uh, he can pretty much take on Pillowswine if he's a bulk upset. So if he brings that specific side, it could be bad. But if he doesn't, then this Quillfish can actually switch on him quite a few times. Uh, the reason I'm Okan is because on the lead matchup against Nihiligo, uh, I can actually take a Specs Power Gem as well as a Specs Thunderbolt uh, from Nihiligo very, very well. And I can just waterfall it and knock it out as long as it has less than, I believe, 72 HP investment. Uh, which puts it at 163 HP, if I'm not mistaken. But anyway, uh, I'm able to knock it out with a Waterfall. I have Taunt on there for his, um, for his Bullaby to make sure that it can't defog on me. Uh, and as well as his Celestela, Celestela, excuse me, to make sure that it can't get up Leech Seeds on me. Uh, and then we've got Spikes, uh, of course, because Spikes actually wear down his team very, very nicely, especially the Gallade, the Zygarde, the Nihiligo, and the Alolan Marowak. As you can see, those are the things that I'm most scared of, uh, those four specifically. And then we've got Poison Jab on there, just because I want something to hit Whimsicott. I don't want it switching in perpetually on me. I don't I, I don't want to reveal my fourth move until I absolutely have to. I doubt he would bring Whimsicott against me, and I'll actually show you guys the team that I expect uh, Greg to bring against me. You guys see it on the right over there. Uh, Mega Gallade, Zygarde, Nihiligo, Rotomwash, Golisopod, and Alolan Marowak are the six that I expect. So uh, if those six come, then great. I think I've covered them pretty well. They're the biggest threats to me, of course, but uh, I think I can handle them. Quillfish also handles the Golisopod decently well because I resist both its stabs and uh, I'm able to poison jab it, knock it into... Uh, into emergency exit, I can get up spikes on it, things like that. So, uh, very nice cool f cool fish set. Uh, you guys see the EV spread on screen, of course. We have uh, 244 HP with uh, with the Wakan Berry, uh, with the 36 Spadef allows me to take Specs Power Gem. That's the strongest hit that Nihiligo can hit me with because Wakan Berry pretty much reduces uh, Thunderbolt to, to only doing like 70% to me. Uh, I've got 100 defense so that I can take hits from 
things like Gallade and, and whatnot, and Celesteela and uh, Sneasel, especially Alolan Marowak. Uh, I also can switch into Alolan Marowak's fire move, so that's always really, really nice. Uh, and I've got 20 speed to speed, beat speed creeps once again, so... Uh, that's pretty much it. I actually think I also outspeed max speed Alolan Marowak, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, Alolan Marowak. Alola Marowak. There we go. Let's see. At level 50. I'll just tell you guys right now. Yeah, Adamant hits 97. Jolly hits 106. Yeah, so I'm outspeeding max speed Marowak. So that's why I decided to, uh, to go with this speed as well. It beats speed creeps and it beats the Alolan Marowak. So... That's, uh, that's pretty much everything, guys. Uh, if you guys did enjoy, make sure to uh, leave a like down below. Check out my opponent, Greg. He's, uh, he's a great content creator. I absolutely love his intro. I've liked this guy from the moment that I met him. He's really cool. And uh, you guys should definitely go and check him out. Link in the description, as always. All of my links are there. I don't always mention this, but Twitter is down there. If you guys want to go and follow me on Twitter, uh, you guys can keep up with me whenever something happens. Uh, that's the, probably the best way. That and my Discord server. Uh, if you guys go back a few videos, uh, I might include a link to the Discord server as well down below, so you guys can check that out uh, and join if you're interested. But yeah, that's pretty much everything, guys. Uh, as usual, like I said, leave a like down below. Subscribe if you haven't already, and I will catch you guys later. Ciao.